This is a story about a trip I took to Toronto about 25 years ago. I was doing business consulting at the time, and I had a client in Toronto, and uh, so I went. I flew in to do a consult there. Now, let me back up and give a little explanation. Americans get a bad rap by uh, foreigners, by the rest of the world, for being narcissistic. Um, for not having a good awareness of what goes on in the rest of the world and not caring and all this kind of stuff, blah, blah, blah. Um, some things you have to understand. Uh, if you drive 300 miles in one direction in Europe, you're liable to be in another country. If you drive 300 miles in one direction in the United States, you're liable to still be in the same state. And we have 50 states. The uh, United States is a huge land mass. We have a huge population. We have 290 million people here. Um, you know, so there's a lot of, but compared to a country that has, say, 20, 30 million people in it, a lot more goes on here. Um, I mean, I, there's just a lot that goes on when you have 290 people in a, on a, in a country. Uh, plus, we have media companies, uh, Hollywood, the Hollywood Studios, television networks, radio networks, all this kind of stuff, all of which is geared to delivering media to the United, to people in the United States that's, that's from the United States, about the United States. Um, we don't see a lot of foreign films here. Uh, almost all of our films are produced by United States company, companies that are geared for people in the United States. Um, in fact, uh, Canadians produce a lot of American television and uh, movies, but when they do, when the, when the media is geared for um, sale in the United States, they disguise things. They disguise cop uniforms, street signs, all this kind of stuff so that it looks American. Uh, if you take a daily newspaper in the United States, um, you're going to get one or two pages worth of foreign news, and the rest of it's going to be local, state, or national news in the United States. Uh, it's just the way it is. The, this, this, I mean, you live in the United States, and it's all geared towards the United States. You know, news companies don't report stuff from overseas, or at least they don't put it in our newspapers. It doesn't come into our movies, all that sort of thing. So that's pretty much what we see on a day-to-day -day basis in the United States. We just don't see foreign countries, foreign customs, foreign lifestyles, all that sort of thing. It just doesn't happen that much. So you get used to that sort of thing when you live in the United States and you grow up here. And when I went to Toronto, I flew in, and um, Toronto looks a lot like Pittsburgh. If you've ever been to Pittsburgh, that's what it looks like. If you've never been to Pittsburgh, well, come to Pittsburgh and you'll know what Toronto looks like. A couple of things that happen. In, one of the things that I noticed in, in Toronto that was kind of odd was uh, the streets and things look like American streets, but the street signs are all wrong. In the United States, we don't have international signs, you know, the little circles with the lines through them. These signs are designed so that it doesn't matter what your language is, you can understand what it means. If you go to Europe, you see a lot of these. You go to England, you see a lot of these. I'm not sure about Australia, but... I know in Europe you do see these and other parts of the world. But in the United States we don't have them. Street signs are a certain, uh, a certain shape, a certain color depending on the function, but it's not the same as international signs. You go into Toronto, they have international signs. So the streets look like American streets, the cars look like American cars, but, it, but the street signs don't. So it's a very kind of a weird, surrealistic thing when you s step onto the street in Toronto and you see it in from the United States. But a couple of uh, in, uh, funny things happened to me. Um, one was uh, I went into a cafe at one point. I wanted something to eat. So I sat down and I ordered whatever I ordered to eat. And I asked for iced tea. And the, the uh, waitress says, we don't have iced tea. And, I, and I'm thinking to myself, who doesn't have iced tea? How do you not have iced tea. So I said, uh, okay, um, do you have ice? Yeah. Okay. Do you have tea? Yeah. Okay. 
do this. Take some, take a glass, put some ice in it, and then pour tea over it. Iced tea. <laughs> for, for some reason, and I don't know why, iced tea apparently means something different in Toronto than it does anywhere in the United States. Almost anywhere in the United States you order iced tea, they know what you're talking about. It means a certain thing, but apparently in Toronto it doesn't. <laughs> so it was very odd. And then the last thing that happened to me was uh, I'd finished up my consult. I was checking out my hotel room. I had packed up, got all my bags out, locked the door. I had my key. It was on my way. It was outside walking towards the office. And I thought, and this was in the days when you could rent a hotel room without a credit card. You just sign up, sign in, and they give you a hotel room and a key. And then you can pay cash on your way out. And that's what I was going to do. I was going to pay cash for the hotel room. I had some petty cash. So I pull out my wallet to make sure I have enough money. And I open up my wallet, and I have no money. I'm like, oh, crap. I'm in a foreign country. I have to pay a hotel bill, and I don't have any money. Crap, what will they do? I mean, I can't, you know, do they arrest you here? I don't know what happens, you know. You've, you're a foreigner and you can't pay your bill and, you know, what happens? <laughs> and then it dawned on me. In the United States, all the money's green. One side of the money in the United States is green and the other side is black and white with some green coloring on it, Okay. And so when you when you grow up in the United States, all you ever see for money is green stuff. It's green. And the fact that it's green, it's money. Okay, good. We're all straight on that. As it turns out, I, you know, I had opened up my wallet and I didn't see any money in the wallet. And you know, I start worrying all this stuff, and then it dawns on me: uh, there is th these pieces of paper that are in my wallet their money here. It was Canadian money. I had plenty of Canadian money, but Canadian money's colored. It's got all kinds of colors and, and that sort of thing on it. And, and this is what they use for money here. But to me, just, you know, off the top of my head as an American looking at my wallet and not seeing anything green, like crap, I don't have any money. So, you know, anyway, I had enough money to pay the bill and all that sort of thing. But it was a very odd, another kind of a surrealistic thing, you know, oh crap, I don't have any money. No, wait, this is money. Okay. So, anyway, that's it. Two brief stories, two brief little things that happened to me in, in uh, Canada. So, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. Thanks.